Hello again, it's uh, Ed Morrow here from Holborn Gospel Hall, just with another message on a Sunday for yourselves. Today I wanted to speak a little bit about love. I'm sure we've all been shocked by the events of the last week and a bit, and the attack on Sir David Amos and his death in his surgery um, when he was speaking to constituents. And it's quite incredible to think of the hate involved in taking somebody else's life. But he's not the only one that's died in the last while. There was a 14-year-old boy at Glasgow Station was stabbed to death as well. And I just want to speak about love because it's the opposite of what we see happening very often in the world. We see people angry. We see people chanting and protesting and bringing their anger. And this anger spills over into violence. And yet that's not what God would have us do. When Jesus was on the earth, he was asked by the Pharisees, and it said in Matthew chapter 22, verses 35 to 40, then one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him and saying, teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it, you shall love your neighbour as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Jesus was telling us that the most important thing was love. Love for God because he created us and because he was there for us. And love for one another. That if we can't love one another, then we can't love God. And Jesus spoke to his disciples before he left this earth. And he said to them in John chapter 13, verses 34 to 35, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Jesus wanted his disciples to love one another, and through this be an example to the world. We can't always agree with each other. We can't always get on because we're human. But we should still love one another. We should still think that life is so important that it shouldn't be taken on a whim. That life is the most important thing. And for Christians, every life is equal. Every life is important and every life is equal. And it's terrible to see people losing their lives just because somebody disagreed with them. I remember many years ago I was asked to do a reading at my friend's wedding and the reading was 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and it's all about love as it would be at a wedding. So I'll just read that. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. We can speak eloquently, we can be charismatic but if we don't love others then we're a sounding brass or a clanging symbol. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned but have not love, it profits me nothing. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself is not puffed up, love does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil. How important that would be if we could all be like that. We don't envy, we suffer long and are kind. When somebody does something against us, are we quick to react? Are we quick to be angry? But it says that love suffers long as in, and is kind. When we see other people getting on and being better than us, do we envy? It says love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It's not all about me. We seem to have a problem nowadays that it is all about us. It's all about what my rights are, what I can do, not thinking about what about the rest of society. What about quite often when we promote rights of one party, we are impacting adversely on rights of another party. We should be looking to work evenly with people. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up. It does not behave rudely. 
does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity. How often do we people, when we see events like this, say, well, he deserved it, or, well, that's what happens when you do these things. That's not what the Bible tells us to do. We should not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoice in the truth. Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But then that which is perfect has come, which is speaking about the Lord Jesus Christ and his kingdom, then that which is in part will be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. And now abide faith, hope, love, these three. But the greatest of these is love. Jesus was very clear that we should love God and we should love one another. We should treat people the way that we wish to be treated. Yes, we can disagree on things, but we can disagree politely, evenly, having balanced discussions without resorting to violence and killing other people just because they disagree with what we believe in. And why do we do this? Because God set us the example. He set us the example of love. And it says the most famous verse in the Bible, John chapter 3, verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The Lord Jesus Christ came to this earth. He did nobody any harm. Even at his trial, Pilate could say, I find no fault in this man. They brought people to testify against them, but even they couldn't agree. And nobody could prove that he did anything wrong. And yet he was willing to die. Angry men took the Lord Jesus Christ. They beat him. They pulled his hair out. They put a crown of thorns on his head. They nailed him to a cross and they thrust a spear into his side. And this was God's son. And he did it for love. He did it for love for us. He was willing to sacrifice for love for us. I've been down to St Andrews and you can do a tour there and it will take you around and show you where Christians were martyred for their faith. People who were willing to die for their faith because angry men disagreed with them and wanted to kill them. And yet God says to us that love is the way, that we should love one another and we should care for one another. We hope that things can improve in this world, but we know that things are bad because of the way people get angry. They disagree with each other and people are willing to kill each other because they disagree. And yet that's not what the Bible teaches us. And it's not what God would have us do. He would have us love one another. Thank you.